Okay, so take the syringes, take both, mess around. Okay. So I'm just taking it and messing around. All right. Now go ahead and hold it up to me how you think a syringe is held. How do you think I'm supposed to hold a syringe? Oh, good. Are you guys seeing me do this before? Okay, cool. So yes. So thumb index finger is how you want to hold it um, to make sure that it's nice and stable. Some of you are going to end up holding it in between the fingers. Don't do it. If you go ahead and try right now and then squeeze your fingers together, you're going to see it starts to shake, right? It's really unstable. So we don't want to try to insert this into a vein in the animal uh, because we're going to be shaking. Cool. So always index finger or always thumb. And then I can change up if it's my index finger or my middle finger that I'm holding on because I can then use, if I need to go directly into an animal, I can then use my index finger to pull up. So go ahead and hold your syringe tip down in between your thumb and your index finger and then pull up on the plunger, pull down on the plunger, up and then down and then flip up and then down. And then remember, I need to be doing this one handed because where's the other hand going to be? On the animal, right? So my other hand's going to be on the animal and I need to then be able to do this both. So switch hands. Again, tip up, pull down, push up on the syringe and then flip it, pull back up and then push down. Why is it important that I aspirate that I'm pulling back a little bit before I push the medication in? Because make sure I'm in the right spot. So we still need to know both of those motions. Cool. And if I'm going in at an angle, I might change just kind of the curvature. So my thumb then instead of being on the side will be on the top. And then I can use my ring finger or my pinky to pull down. Cool beans? Similarities, differences. What are we noticing about the syringes? Similarities and differences. Different sizes. Okay, what are the different sizes? All right, the thicker one has a wider barrel. What size, if I were going to ask you what size syringe that is? It's a mil? How many cc's? Three? Yes, three cc's. Thank you. I'm like, there's so much audio input right now. All right, so the large one is three cc's. Or... What does it say on the barrel? Milliliters. All right, so the large one is three cc's or three milliliters. And we know that our milliliter equals our cubic centimeter, cubic centimeter equals a uh, milliliter, or the cc, right? The ml and cc are the same. All right, small one. What's the size of the small one? Okay, so it's one what? One milliliter or cc. Awesome. One milliliter or one cc. Anything that's similar between the two syringes? Okay, cool. So they got tick marks. All right, they've got tick marks. Anything else that's the same? They have suction in them. All right, so I can aspirate them. They've got like the physical anatomy is the same. They have a plunger, they have a top, they have a barrel. Okay, so they have the physical anatomy is the same. All right, so the same physical anatomy. What are other things that we're noticing about them? Yeah, so it's got a weird lip. Is that what you called it? Okay, so around the tip, we have this weird barrel, right? This weird lip around it. Um, do you notice anything about that, the shape or anything that's like in it? Looks like something screwed into it. Awesome. So this is what we call a lure lock top. Or lure lock tip. So if I have my needle, what do you think is going to happen to my lure lock? How am I going to put my needle into my lure lock tip?
I'm going to screw it in. Yeah. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to push and then twist. So take, push it, twist it in. This is nice because then it's going to secure my top. Whoa. All right. So I take it. Boom. All right. The other one, does it have that locking mechanism? Nope. Doesn't have a locking mechanism. This is just called a slip tip. All right. So that's just a slip tip. So how do you think I'm going to get the needle onto the slip tip? I don't. I'm not going to use a needle on this. I just slip it in. Yep. So slip tip. I just whoop, slip it on there. It's on. Is it as secure? Nope. So it's not as secure. So with this one, I just kind of have to be mindful of that. With this, I can still, I'm not just going to simply slip it on there, but I am going to twist it. So this is where physics is our friend. You know how like you try to like slide across the floor and your bare feet and you stop at some point. So that friction stops you. So that's what we're going to use with the needle. So even to take it off then, I have to like push down and twist up. Like it's a weird thump action. So that way I can undo the friction. So I'm pushing in and twisting one way to create friction. And then I can undo that friction the other way. Okay. So that's how it becomes more stable. What about actual movement of my plunger between the two? What about the actual movement? Smaller one's easier? You guys agree with that? Yeah, I, yeah, I would say so. Okay. And then, um, so smaller one's easier. It takes less force applied. Okay. So less pressure to move my plunger. Okay. And then remember when we're holding our syringe, we always, always, always hold index finger and thumb. Never like a cigarette. It's not. It's not stable then, right? Because we start to wiggle. So always thumb and index finger or thumb and ring finger or eh, this starts to get wibble wobbly, but I can put both down. Cool. All right. Less pressure to move the plunger. So then that means what? It requires more force in the larger one? Okay, cool. So I need more force then for here. Why do you think that is that I need more force in my larger plunger, my larger syringe, I need to apply more force. I have more volume in here. Yeah. So there's going to be a higher pressure because it's a higher volume area. Cool. So I have a, like a larger volume at a time. Larger volume. Ah, ha ha to fill. There we go. All right, so we have a larger volume to fill or release, okay? So the pressure is going to be greater because, right, we said everything is like vacuum packed and vacuum sealed. So we have a little vacuum in here and then it is larger volume. So it is going to take more pressure to fill that and displace physics, guys, not a physicist. Make sure you pay attention in your physics classes. All right, other things, similarities or differences. The cool thing about this particular one so not all 1cc's have that, so you guys can see it still has that tip. Um, not all of them have that little plunger in it, but it is nice because it actually reduces the amount of waste in the syringe. So if I have this one, and then I don't, like, if you have the stop barrel, inside of this, when we start pulling up liquid, in the tip, there'll be, that liquid will be in that tip and in the whole needle. So you are actually still losing some volume every time you give an injection or every time you move a needle around because there's that volume from the tip of the plunger to that needle hub. So this one's kind of nice because it removes that waste. So then the waste is only in the needle part of the shaft. Okay, cool. I like that. All right. Uh, anything else? We talked about the pressure. We talked about the volume. We talked about the tips of the syringes. We just need to talk about the actual like 
tick marks, right? Because are the numbers the same? No. All right. So I want to look at the numbers. We'll start with the 3cc syringe. Okay. So go ahead and hold up your 3cc syringe. So if I'm, this is the tip of the syringe, I have nothing in it, right? Because it's the very tip of the syringe. So this is 0, 0.00. What's my next large tick mark? What's the quantity? 0 0.5, okay. So then I have 0 0.5. The one after that? One. One half? Just one? Are you sure? Just says one? What should it say? Yeah. Those placeholders are going to be helpful with us. One, when we write it and we see it, if we just see 0.5, your eyes may not pick up the point, which is why we do a 0 0.5, so we can actually see that there's a placeholder in front of that. Because giving 0.5 of a medication versus 5.0 of a medication could kill your animal. Like, no joke, the legit depends on what you're giving. Not good. Right, so we always even on the back end of things, we also want to use the zeros as that placeholder so we really see what number we're administering. Okay, and then the last one is that 1.5, right? Yeah, okay. All right, so then each of the big marks go up by how many? They go up by half, they go up by 0.5, okay. What about the little tick marks? Because if I ask you to draw up 0 0.7, how are you going to know what 0 0.7 is? Go ahead and try to draw up 0 0.7 on your 3cc syringe. So 0 0.7 then, where did you guys go? Two tick marks after 0.5. How did you know to go two tick marks after 0.5? <laughs> your brain's new to do that though, right? Like you didn't even think about it. You were just like, oh, let me figure that out in my head. How did you figure it out? Thought about a ruler. Good. That's all it is is a ruler. So each of these little tick marks then is how many? Point 0.1. So 0 0.10. 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and then 0 0.5. Cool? All right. So our tick marks and our volume that we're pulling in, this is why we have that larger volume, right? We have that more pressure because we're going up by 0 0.10 mils. So every time, like as we're doing that, that's how much we're able to flood into the system. And if you want to, you can draw that diagram as well. All right, so now I have the one milliliter syringe. What is my first, so this is gonna be 0 0.00 because I'm at the tip of the plunger, can't fill anything. What's my next tick mark? 0 0.1? Yeah, 0 0.10, okay, and then the next one, 0 0.2, and then 0 0.3, okay. So now if I asked you to draw up 0 0.25 on your 1cc syringe, where do you go? Where's your, where's your stopping point for 0 0.25? Where was it at? Right between the second and third small mark, okay? So then each of these little tick marks goes up by how many? 0 0.02. Okay, so they each go up by 0 0.02. And so that lends itself, we already said we were more precise, right? 
And that's exactly why. So you're able to be more precise. There's less pressure to move because you're going up by that 0 0.02. All right, so both hands, I want you guys to draw up point eight five. Draw a point eight five. Draw a point eight five. One handed for both of them. Point eight five. Mrs. Ritter's gonna go around and check you guys. Point eight five. Should have just said 0.8, Mrs. Ritter, and called it a day, but I had to be difficult. If I had to draw 0.85 of medication, which syringe would I pull first? Which syringe do you think it'd be easier to administer 0.85 of medication? The little one? It was easy for you guys to draw up that plunger all the way back. Okay, so to draw up, to draw up, it was easier with the 3cc. Because here's 0.85. So the 3cc definitely easier. More precise, the smaller one. Depending on what you're doing, especially like Mrs. Like Miss Leslie's hand, I don't even, like you can see that, right? Like this takes a lot of force and time for me to do that versus here. So hand-wise, if I need to give 0.85, I am just going to use that 3cc syringe, depending on what I'm doing. Because if I have to give medication in the vein, and I use this tiny syringe, do I have a lot of space left to see if I'm even in my vein to be able to aspirate here? I really don't. So I have to think about that, even though I could, because my volume dictates like I have enough volume, but usability, not as much. So I would take that 3cc syringe versus the 1cc for that amount of volume because it's so close to that edge of the plunger. Make sense? Okay. Now if I'm just administering IM, maybe I use the big one, but that's still going to be, am I going to be able to administer it as quickly? So now take the plungers at the same exact time, administer your 0.85. And then what do we notice happens? To the one cc syringe, what happens? It takes a lot longer. Depending on the medication, depending on the animal, I don't want to necessarily take that long. So it might be nice if I'm going to do something underneath the skin to be able to use that 3cc. Because again, that pressure, that amount of volume, I can administer more in my 3cc at once than I can with my 1cc. But now quickness is not always what we're going for. So just kind of keep that in the back of your head too.